Google finally released Gemini Pro and ImageN2, their new Stable Diffusion image generator. In a previous video, I covered all the features in ImageN2, so let's just jump right in and actually generate some images. We're gonna compare it side by side with Microsoft Copilot using Dolly 3. On the right hand side, we've got Copilot from Microsoft. You can find that at copilot.microsoft.com. For the large language model, this is running GPT-4, the same thing that's running in the plus version of ChatGPT, although it's likely not GPT-4 Turbo in most cases, so it's slightly less capable than the plus version of ChatGPT, but it is running a modified version of Dolly 3 for image generation. That's what we're gonna test directly against Google Bard. So on the left-hand side of the screen, if you go to bard.google.com, this should be accessible to pretty much everyone on planet Earth at this point. This on the back end for the large language model is running the new Gemini Pro model. In benchmarks, this is performed as good as, if not better than, Chad GPT-4, not GPT-4 Turbo. There should be that distinction. And I think Google specifically went against the older version of Chad GPT because they realize that they're still playing catch up. Outside of that, this has a brand new model that's powering the image generation called ImageN2. So to start this off, I said, hey, give me 10 image prompts to help test your new AI image generation capabilities. We got back a whole bunch of prompts, even some bonus prompts towards the bottom. We'll see if we can get through all these. The first one we're going to test is a photorealistic portrait of a cat made entirely of blooming flowers sitting regally on a throne. Love the use of regal there. We'll drop that in both systems. We got back the Dolly 3 images. Let's take a look at those. I don't know why it's taking such a long time for Bard to actually come back with an image. Maybe their systems are overloaded or something, but I gotta say, this is really cool. This looks like it's entirely made out of flowers, just like the prompt suggests. And these are pretty fantastic, actually. I love this one. Even the chair is made out of flowers. Really cool results. And on the left, we're still waiting on Bard to come back. Maybe if I click regenerate, it'll come back with something. It's been another couple minutes. I'm still waiting for Bard to come back with anything. This might be a really long video if I can't get it to actually generate an image. It's now been almost 10 minutes. It still hasn't generated an image. I'm gonna try and load a new prompt up, see if we can get something else. There we go. Finally, after about 15 minutes of playing around, I got back two images. Cool. Let's take a look at these. Eh, I mean, it looks like it's a cat, but flowers are laid over it. It's not really made of flowers. The Dolly example is much, much better. This looks more like Dolly 2 or early versions of Stable Diffusion. It looks like, again, Google here is playing catch up, but I don't wanna judge fully. Let's look at some more prompts. For the second one, and please don't take 10 minutes to generate, a pixel art scene of a bustling cyberpunk marketplace, neon lights reflecting in puddles on the rain slick streets. Really cool. I do actually, I really appreciate the way that the prompts are coming back from Bard. I think that's really cool. All right, this time Bard came back really quickly. Maybe they just had some server issues. Whatever, we'll get past that. All right, here are the images back from both. And remember, we asked for a pixel art scene. Now on the left, we've got the version from Bard, and it doesn't quite look like pixels. It looks like, I don't know, pointillism or a impressionist painting of some sort. The one on the right from Dolly definitely follows the style guidelines. This looks like straight up an 80s video game made out of pixels. You gotta give this win to Dolly as well. For number three, we've got a Van Gogh inspired landscape painting of a rolling wheat field under a swirling starry night sky. And here's our result. I gotta say, subjectively, I like Dolly much, much more in this. Again, the, the ones on Bard are just kind of simplistic. Imogen 2 doesn't seem like it's at the same level as what's coming back from Dolly. This one's cool. It's even sitting on a table as if it's an easel that's been painted or a canvas that's been painted. Very cool. A hyper-realistic close-up of a single raindrop splashing on a colorful stained glass window pane. This is very specific. A single drop of water splashing and hyper-realistic close-up. We'll see if it gets both of those right. Okay, so from Imogen 2, you've got a single drop of rain. It looks like it's almost glass-like in this portion here. Not really that realistic. It's not splashing on a window pane. It's in front of a stained glass window. On the right from Dolly, this is pretty fantastic. It actually looks like this raindrop is part of a stained glass window. Very, very cool. You see individual water drop. That one's cool. You can see the reflection of the entire stained glass inside of the water drop. Yeah, these are night and day better. It's not even a comparison, honestly. All right, we're halfway through our list. Now we've got a children's book illustration of a friendly octopus reading a book in a cozy underwater library. Yeah, these are great. 
Looks like a friendly octopus. It's an underwater library. He's reading a book. Uh, this one looks even more friendly. It's real smiley. Although, look at the illustrations that came back from Dolly. That looks a lot more kid-friendly. It looks a lot more polished. Something that you would actually put into a book. Yep, once again, not even a competition. For a sixth prompt, we've got a minimalist line art drawing of a majestic dragon soaring through a cloud-filled sky. All right, this first result's pretty cool. It is minimalist. It's interesting because it looks like it's almost two different art styles combined together. You've got this really minimalist set of wings and then a completely different style of shading for the rest of the body. And the second one, I wouldn't call that minimalist, but it's a really cool drawing. And then from Dolly, yeah, this looks more like the exact art style that it was trying to come up with. This followed the prompt much, much closer. This looks like something you could actually make into almost a coloring book. It definitely has that simplicity. It doesn't have the shading. It doesn't have the other things sort of depicted in the prompt. All right, I love this next one because it pushes the creativity boundaries. A detailed scientific illustration of a newly discovered alien creature unlike anything seen before. All right, interesting. So Imogen and Bard come back and say, I can't generate images of that. Try asking me to generate images of something else. I wonder why that would have triggered something. But Dolly 3 came back with very cool, highly detailed drawings here. This is awesome. Love the way this looks. That is terrifying and awesome at the same time. Wow, these are really cool. I wouldn't want to run into that. Clearly, Dolly wins this one. Bard couldn't even generate the image. Next up, a vintage travel poster advertising a trip to a fantastical floating island city. All right, Imogen came back and it has a floating city. It actually looks like Portugal, which funny enough, I'm in Portugal right now. It says Freeman Atterlined of City. Clearly they haven't cracked text yet. Let's look at the second one and it's another floating city. Pretty cool. Over on the Dolly side, you get another Pretty similar art style, actually. I think this one's more of a draw than the others have been. Oh man, look at this text. Suplet City Slave 2. Uh, these aren't even words. So you can make out a couple of things, but still struggle busting with text. The third one, that's pretty cool. And the fourth one. Both of these have just awful text in them. I'd actually call that one close to a draw. For number nine, we're doing a photo of a robot chef meticulously plating a gourmet meal in a high-tech restaurant kitchen. Well, that's interesting. It says, while I cannot generate photos, I can describe one for you. So I guess it's refusing to generate an image for me. Let's just say generate the image. This is really weird. Okay, now it came up with an image on the left-hand side from Google, but now on the right-hand side, I don't know what Copilot's doing, but it's actually just printing out D3, D3 over and over again instead of generating an image. Okay, now maybe it's it's still doing a whole bunch of really weird stuff. Somehow this prompt seems to have broken both AI chat assistants. But nonetheless, here's what came back from Google. Hands are really weird, but uh, it does look like a nice plated meal there. And this one's kind of creepy, but uh, yeah, it looks like they nailed it. it came up with plated food. These are robot chefs. Not bad. And we'll try one last time to get Copilot to generate an image for us. It just says I'll try to create that and then it doesn't do anything. I don't know what's going on there, so we've got to give this one to Bard. Next up, a surreal depiction of a clock melting and dripping down a Salvador Dali-esque staircase. It's interesting because Copilot says, I'm sorry, I'm not able to create that for you. Is there anything else I can help you with? And then it goes on to create it. So I, I don't quite know why that message comes back, but kind of odd. And here's what we get back from both. On the left, it's really simplistic, low resolution, low quality. We'll look at both of them. Looks like something dripping down the stairs, not necessarily a clock. I wouldn't get Salvador Dali directly from this. On the right hand side from Dali 3, we got a pretty cool result. Looks like a melting clock. This one's real interesting. Maybe the clock's made out of cheese of some sort. And this one as well. It's Salvador Dali, all of his paintings sort of had the clocks dripping down. They were elongated and stretched. These look more like strings and cheese. I will give the actual resolution and quality from Bing is drastically better, but I wouldn't say that this really nailed the prompt in either of them. Why not? Let's pull one of these bonus prompts. We'll say, 
Create an image that expresses the feeling of, I'm going to say sadness. And what the heck is this? She's definitely sad and crying, but I don't know what those are tears made out of. That's kind of creepy. And then on the right from Dolly, well, this is interesting. Rather than depict a person, it's sort of this lonely street light in a completely black scene. And actually all four images are. That's interesting. I feel like that was sort of a bizarre glimpse into the mind of the machine. I don't know if I like it or not. Look, it's good to have more competition. I'm glad that Google came out with ImageN2 and they released it to the public so that we can help improve it. And the only way you improve these models is by using them and giving that consistent feedback. Google's playing catch up, plain and simple. This is not as good a quality model as anybody else has in the market. This isn't on par with Dolly 3. It's maybe Dolly 2 quality. I would say it's early also in the stable diffusion 1.0, 1.5. It's not that great. And if you're curious, the images that come back are 512 by 512. So definitely not on the level of, say, Stable Diffusion XL, for example. As always, let me know what you think in the comments. I'm Brian Lovett. And remember, all your tech are belong to us. I'm the virtual prophet in the tech town. Breaking down AI, wearing the crown. From basics to complex, never let you down. All your tech AI, earning the renown.